it's time to open my next book. So, huzzah! Oh, alright. 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 I'm done with the Rachel Jokers as you saw in the clip before. Yo! <laughs> it's too good. <laughs> so you probably can tell that I really like this too much. Well, let's start with a proper review and proper like summary of what the Rachel Dragons is about. So actually the Rachel Dragons is about our main character Tao Solarin and he is taking revenge because someone killed his daddy and he, he ain't happy. <laughs> what do the six-fingered man and say? Hello. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. <laughs> yeah. But other than the fact that we are following Tao and his revenge story, we, we find out that the world that Tao lives in is actually really kind of gross. Why is Tao's world gross? Tao's people are called the Omehai people and they are considered the chosen one by the goddesses. And they are built into two different like subcategories. Uh, we have our nobles and we have our lessers. And so within the nobles, we have our royal nobles and then followed by our gifted individuals who are all women and they use magic and then finally just um, noble people. And in the lessers, they're just typical people like governors, farmers and whatsoever. And Tao is actually part of like the lower common uh, lessers. And so you learn about the politics between both the nobles and the lessers and how internally they are not getting along despite having already an external war with a different group of people. And so the two of them are just fighting while fighting an external enemy called the Hedinis. And so that's what the story is actually about. So what did I actually like about um, A Rage of Dragons? Pretty much everything about it. I enjoyed the world building, the characters, and the writing actually. So when we talk about the world building, I think Everwinter actually did a very good job tackling his world and making it very unique with a magic system that actually has consequence to it. So. It's actually a military fantasy with uh, kind of a religious themes if we talk about it because they believe in this goddess and how the magic is kind of derived from there and the chosen ones which is the Omehai people are the ones who are able to use that magic and the only ones who can use her magic and so the magic system is unique because um, it is not like magic just appears out of nowhere there's only a set group of people who can do this magic and they must obtain the magic from somewhere and there will be consequences to it depending on how strong or how weak you are in the magic system. I don't want to explain too much about the magic system. It's because I find that there's a reason why Evan Winter decided to pace it slowly throughout the entire book. That each reveal will give you more insight to his world and it will remind you why the magic system is the way that it is. That's why I don't want to reveal too much about the magic system. Which, if you read it, you'll enjoy with each reveal. Like me. Like I did. So, yeah. And let's talk about his characters. Tao is an insufferable person, but not someone that I could have not root for the entire journey. Because his father got killed. Hello! My name is Inigo Montoya! You killed my father! Prepare to die! No! <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's very angry. He has a lot of anger and revenge inside of him. And so sometimes he makes the most rash decision based on that anger. And you see that humanistic like, characteristic about him. And you root for him. You want him to win. You want him to defeat his enemies because of that reason. And I, I, the, I ate it up. I ate his story up. I ate all of it up. I wanted more of Tao. I wanted more of his anger. I wanted all that bitterness that he carries with him. And so sometimes when Evan like lets lets Tao be a little bit happy, I get happy. But that's kind of rude of me. You know, Tao deserves to be happy. I want him to defeat his enemies in that sense. Yeah. Therefore, I find that he, Evan Winter. That's an amazing job making me root for a character that is not necessarily the most likable because of the actions that he does. But other than Tao himself, I think Evan Winter did a pretty good job uh, with his other side characters, making them very lovable, which is all of his um, Tao's sword brothers, essentially. Um, his like, training mates during his training era. And I think they were adorable, and I really, really enjoy um, Udak, who is one of these like burly big guy who can like literally crash anyone down. And it said that the lessers have um, a smaller build compared to our nobles. And that's why, you know, the nobles look down on the lessers. And so Udang is like probably one of the biggest lessers anyone has ever seen. And I think he has, he's kind of cute. Like he's kind of funny and 
he's he's a brute, but he has personality as a brute. Yeah. And I think there was a lot of heart in the relationships that Tao has built with his fellow like SWAT brothers. When you see his SWAT brothers failing, you feel for them the way that Tao would feel. A lot of anger and a lot of and a lot of sadness. Which which I find that is something excellent that ever Winter can do. He can draw these emotions out of you, which that's how I found. That's why I kept pushing through the story. I kept wanting to know more. I kept wanting to know if everybody would be okay or not. Yeah. Our main love interest, Zuri, was an interesting person as well. I think she, what I liked about his female characters, which aren't many, there were only quite a number um, of them, they're all strong female characters. In his world, um, the female characters are the ones that hold like most power. So if they are gifted with magic powers, they are very highly regarded in society, and are, they, only, they are only ruled by a queendom, there are no kings. And I thought that was so dope! Like, I think it's hard to see queendoms, so to see that female empowerment in that sense, I like. <laughs> I like. Yeah. Um, Okay, but other than that, writing-wise, there are quotes in here that Evan Winter writes for me that really touches me in a way that that really like just pulls at my heartstrings. I guess maybe a line that I can share would be Tao's father was just killed and he was speaking to someone and he said, Every day, every season, every cycle, you live in fear, unable to enjoy, enjoy the taste of food, the sun's warmth, or the night's breeze, because one day I'll come. I'll challenge you to a blood duel. Petty noble, I won't reveal the name. And you will die at the end of my father's sword. Oh, when he said that line, I felt it. I felt like I was the one who was gonna get killed. <laughs> Give me the princess vibe, the princess bright vibes. If you know, you know. You know him. Giving Ingo Yo Mantaya vibes like Father's Revenge. Yeah. Hello. My name is Ingo Mantaya. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's like writing like this, this intensity that he gives to his character through his writing is what I felt was so engaging in his storytelling. Yeah, and he, he did add quite a few foreshadowing bits which I liked and I saw and I noted and it did happen in the end. I won't tell you what, but I'm not very good at foreshadowing, I'm not good at figuring out how plots would go. I honestly love almost every part of The Rage of Dragons. Um, there are minor bits that I did not enjoy was probably the romance and that was like, that was like the smallest part of the entire thing. I just didn't like the romance at all. I didn't think that it was necessary. I felt that relationship could have easily not been a romantic one, it could have been easily a platonic one and we didn't need the romance at all. And I guess it will just add to the intensity, but Tao just seems to have intense feelings for pretty much anyone he has close connection with. So, I didn't think the romance was necessary, which leads me to my next point, which is I didn't enjoy the one sex scene that was inside. I didn't enjoy the sex scene. I thought it was completely unnecessary, two pages wasted on that. I did not need it, it was not say hot at all, it was not like it added any perspective, it was just there. So, we could have easily, we could have easily eliminated that, but it's fine. I. I'm not very bothered by it. I just wanted to mention that that's not my preference. But otherwise, I loved The Rage of Dragons. My rating is S tier. S tier book, like honestly. It's just slightly not so S tier like it's but it is S tier like. I am obsessed with The Rage of Dragons. I'm obsessed with the Burning series. And I and based on that, can you guess what? I <laughs> Can you guess like how badly I want to continue on to the next one? Yeah, so it is like uh, based on a rating of dragons. How badly do I want to continue on? Out of five dragons, six dragons. Out of five dragons, six dragons. I want to continue with this. <sighs> it's so good. But I have to pace myself because this is only. I, I really got it, you know. It's right here in my hands. Oh, but I only have like the second book and I don't have the third book or fourth book or whatever how long this series would take. It's too dangerous for me to continue on. If you get one, I mean. But thank you, Evan Winter, for creating such a beauty. I am so thankful, truly. Okay, bye.